My name is Paulo Nunes de Abreu, also known in English as Paul Nunes Dia. I am the co-founder of the Forum Hospital do Futuro, uh, which is an NGO that organizes think tanks and thought leadership sessions since 2006 in Portugal. I am delighted to have here with me in studio uh, Miquel Simon Monteiro, which is a physician, uh, internal medicine specialist with, uh, uh, that holds a competence in medical emergency. Uh, she studied uh, medicine at the Heinrich Heine University from Düsseldorf, Germany. Uh, she worked as a doctor in Germany, in the United Kingdom, and also in Portugal. She directed for 10 years the uh, National Emergency Services. Uh, in this context, she won a quality award, and uh, is, she's also a member of the European Society of Emergency Medicine. Within this scope, she attended several programs, uh, management <coughs> programs, in, uh, namely business intelligence uh, uh, in the Nova uh, Information Management School in Lisbon. And in, uh, in September, she uh, assumes the Directorate of Planning of Organizational Development in SPMS. And uh, within that scope, since 2017, she is the director of the National Telehealth Center and coordinates the uh, 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 SNS contact center in Portugal. Uh, on my left hand side, uh, for many of the Portuguese viewers that are seeing us, a very known uh, public figure, which is Adalberto Campos Fernandes, uh, is a Portuguese politician who served as a minister of healthcare from the 26th November 2015 to 15 October 2018 and uh, is uh, graduated as a PhD in Health Administration from the University of Lisbon uh, in the new University of Lisbon, uh, specialized in health policies and uh, related matters. So uh, this is uh, the, my guests here at the studio. And I'm also very, very pleased to have a special guest uh, in uh, connecting from Skype from the UK, uh, Lord Nigel Crisp which is uh, uh, an independent member of the UK House of Lords, uh, where he speaks and works mainly on global health. Uh, Lord Nigel Crisp was chief executive of the English NHS, which is uh, the biggest health system in the world with 1.4 million employees. Uh, and by the way, it's also, uh, I think, the third of the fourth largest organization in the world after uh, just the uh, armed forces in the US and the Chinese army. Uh, uh, he was also permanent secretary of the UK Department of Health from 2000 to 2006. And uh, 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 Lord Nigel Scripps' friendship with Portugal uh, started many years ago, I believe, but was deepened uh, as he was shared of the Gulbenkian Commission on the Future of Health in Portugal. This was a position he, he took from 2013 to 2014. He currently shares the Nursing Now, which is a campaign on improving health globally by raising the profile and status of nursing. Also, uh, he's written a number of books, including uh, Turning the World Upside Down, which is a very interesting book that describes uh, well, what rich countries can learn about health, from the poor countries. So thank you so much, uh, dear guests, for being here with me today. I just pass to Lord Nigel Crisp to start an introductory talk. Then we'll be doing a round of interventions and then open to questions from public that you would like to uh, ask us. Uh, by all means, all yours, the floor. Do, do you want me to make my comments now? Exactly, exactly. That will be very useful. OK, so I'll take about five minutes. That's perfect. That's fine. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, and firstly, let me apologize for not being there in person or indeed for not being able to hear what's going on. Um, but actually, really, firstly, I should be congratulating you on the 40 years of the SNS and the great success that it has been. Although I know that the key for you for the future, just as it is for us in England, um, is about sustainability. Um, and that that's really important. Can I also say it was a great pleasure to work with you on the future of health in Portugal, and I'm holding it up now, so maybe you can see it. Um, future of health in Portugal, everyone has a role to play. I was really delighted to have a chance to work with great colleagues in Portugal, and I think we produced an, 
um, and I thank the Gulbenkian Foundation for sponsoring it. And finally, as a preliminary remark, let me also just say thank you for letting me speak in English. <laughs> I never did more, uh, manage to master Portuguese. I'm really sorry about that. I should have done. Uh, anyway, let me then just say, talk about sustainability just for a bit, just make a few opening remarks. Um, and what I'm going to do is make three points, really. One about what happens inside the SNS. One about what happens outside the NHS. And then thirdly, and really importantly, and sometimes forgotten, is staffing and what we need to do about our health workforce of the future. Now, underpinning all those three points, of course, is the change in disease patterns and the fact that we now have many more non-communicable diseases, diabetes, um, and we here in the UK, just like you in Portugal, still have services which were designed for the old pattern of diseases. Um, much more illness and hospital and doctor based, if I can put it like that. Uh, whereas what we said in this report, of course, is that we need things to be much more health, person and community based. So there's a fundamental big change underpinning everything, which is actually coming from the nature of the way that disease has changed. So let me pick up my three points. So firstly, inside the NHS, inside the SNS, I keep saying the NHS, um, inside the whole service needs to become much more community and indeed home-based, electronically supported. And we're already seeing that. Many new models have started to emerge from care and treatment at, at home, distance monitoring, community links, social prescribing, and so on. And I imagine from our earlier conversation, that Michaela will discuss these. Um, we also said in this report that in addition to shifting towards a much more community-based operation and technology-supported operation, um, there was also a need to rationalize the specialities. I think that you've actually got quite a lot of duplication at speciality level, and I think some of that needs to be rationalized and the service needs to move much more, as I say, to the community-based service. Now, outside the NHS, there's obviously a very important bit of work about patient engagement and what I know some people call co-production of the patient and the, uh, the clinician working together on their illness. And the classic example, of course, where the patient probably provides, I don't know what, 100 or 200 hours of self-care during the course of the year, and the clinician presumably provides two or three hours. You know, you're working together around a shared plan. And that's really important, the engagement of the patient. But the bit I want to stress, because again, it sometimes gets lost, is this is much more than about patients. It's also about the involvement of employers, schools, food manufacturers, all kinds of people in society who are enabling people to be healthy. We know, for example, with employers, um, that going to work and the stress at work can be bad for your health. We also know that going to work and, and, and enjoying and being fulfilled in your work is good for your work, is good for your health. We know the same thing about schools, that schools can be stressful, difficult places where people learn bad habits, or they can be places where people learn to be healthy um, and experience health. And we've got in our country now, all our primary schools, where the children are expected to do exercise during the day. And indeed, there's one school in Scotland, and this is now spreading, where every day at lunchtime, the head teacher and all the teachers and the children all run four times around the playground, which is actually or the, play, the, the grounds, which is actually make, means they run a mile every day, as slow or as fast as they can. So really important that all those people outside the formal health service have a real role to play in, in making change happen. And that's why we proposed in our report that you needed some sort of health council that would sort of bring all these people together so that one had a really concerted approach to improving. And then my final point is about staffing. And clearly, if we have the sort of health service that I've just described, which is much more community and health based and much more technology based, communication technology based, then there needs to be a different approach for staffing. They, staff need to be much more skilled in partnerships with people, with patients and with each other, and much more tech savvy. And that's really quite a big change and needs to be built in, not just, of course, into the pre-service training, but also into the longer term. But I also want to make a particular point about nursing. 
nursing, I think, nurses, I think, are the great undervalued and underutilized resource in the health system. Um, and if you think about what's happening in a lot large parts of the world, including the UK, for example, um, in areas like non-communicable diseases, we now in the UK have no diabetes, um, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and various other diseases. And so on. So we have those sort of um, areas where nurses are playing a bigger role. We see nurses playing a much bigger role in primary care. Um, and we also see them playing a much bigger role in promotion and prevention. And I think this is a real drive that we should be having in every country of the world. And, the re and, and as a result of that, we set up a campaign called Nursing Now, which is now in 103 countries around the world. And next year is going to be the year of the nurse and the midwife. And I think one of the biggest challenges we will see, one of the biggest opportunities, will be to enable nurses to play their role to the full. And I think this will be very true in a community-based service. So, colleagues, that, that's my sort of three thoughts um, for sustainability. Changes inside the hospital or inside the health service, changes outside, particularly in the wider community, with everyone taking some responsibility for health. And thirdly, changes for the way our health workforce are trained, deployed, uh, and, uh, and supported, including obviously with technology, um, and a particular role there for enhancing the role of nursing. So let me stop at that point and hope I may be able to uh, hear some of your conversation and, and uh, uh, pick up any points later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Lord Nigel Chris. This is a, a very insightful contribution. Uh, and uh, I would like now to pass the word to uh, Michael uh, Simon Monteiro, who probably could add something. Thank you, Paolo. Well, good, good morning, everybody. Uh, in the first place, I would like to, to thank Paolo for this kind of invitation. And I'm, of course, honored to be here with Lord Nigel and Professor Adalbert Kempschmendt. Um, and uh, I'm pleased to, to have the opportunity to, to give my point of view on, 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 on this topic. Uh, some of the things that I will say will, I think, link very well to what uh, Lord Michael has, uh, has, has said. Uh, well, first of all, uh, of course, um, uh, our society is changing. We have uh, clearly a, a demographic issue. We become older, which is good. But uh, with age, obviously, um, chronic diseases uh, uh, come and uh, we will lose progressively our autonomy. Um, and uh, uh, then it, it will, uh, uh, there, there is obviously an issue we cannot, and I think we, we must not uh, put all older people into nursing homes. I think we should aim for um, preserving autonomy as long as we can at home. Life expectancy is increasing um, um, here in Portugal, and I think this is a European issue and, and uh, uh, the relation between young people and old people uh, are changing. We have uh, more and more older people and less younger people. So um, this is all, all the, the, the this spectrum is, is, is changing. Uh, and then there is obviously uh, also a, a dilemma in medicine. Um, it becomes more and more specialized. We get more and more drugs that, um, that are personalized and address very specific issues. Uh, so on the, on, on the one hand, we have a very specialized medicine, but on the other hand, we need very much a holistic approach because we are dealing with multi-morbidity and we need care integration. So. Um, uh, having said that, uh, we cannot, we can simply not continue to to address things as we are used to do it. Uh, as what Nigel already said, we need change, and I think change is actually the big challenge here. Um, and um, technology is a great opportunity to enable this change, but it is not, uh, in my opinion, change in itself. Um, and I think there is a lot of confusion about it, this among healthcare professionals, decision makers, politicians, and the society that putting technology into the society, into the healthcare, will change everything. No, people have to change. Um, and um, 
field. And change is always questioning okay. the status quo and uh, the role of physicians, the role of nurses, as, as and what Nigel said, uh, the role of the patient, a more active patient, the role of the family, and uh, the role of the whole community. Uh, it's about how care is actually delivered. And, well, now, how can technology enable change? This is the big question. Uh, and I'm talking Quer about uh, uh, ICT. Uh, well, it can change how care is delivered. And I would like to give you some examples of real world, um, real world examples that are already in place in the Portuguese uh, National Health Service and the SNS. So it can overcome uh, geographic barriers and thereby increase access to care <laughs> Uh, for the patients and uh, access to specialized expertise to, to professionals. There is, for instance, in the Alentejo, uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, in Beja, there is a hospital. They have uh, a specific uh, multidisciplinary uh, diabetes, um, uh, diabetes um, consultation. And what they do via telemedicine, um, they discuss uh, uh, concrete patients issue, uh, concrete problems with uh, primary care physicians that are scattered uh, in small villages around this area. There is, a, uh, there is the patient, there is the primary care physician, there is the caring nurse, and they discuss how to, how to, how to solve uh, uh, the problem of the patient in the best way, uh, and thereby giving access to this patient to very specialized, uh, uh, to very specialized cares. Care. Uh, technology can uh, help to deliver continuous care at home, proactive care, uh, and empower patients and families who will co-manage their chronic disease. Uh, and I'll give you another, another example, which is in the north of the country, in ULS Altominio. They have a, a very interesting program of telemonitoring of COPD patients. Um, and uh, they, uh, at this point, they have included almost 75 patients, which is, which is quite a good number. And they achieved the reduction of 50% of, of, of unplanned hospital admissions, and, uh, uh, which, which is great. Uh, technology can give, as I said before, access to highly specialized care, even in emergency medicine context. So, for instance, in Coimbra, um, uh, the neurology department um, advises in situations of, ac of acute stroke um, the small hospitals in the area, which are about seven. And in the last three years, they help more than 2,000 patients uh, uh, in the acute stroke setting to get, um, uh, to get gold standard of care, uh, even if there is uh, no specialized uh, uh, physician on, 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 on the point of care. So, uh, but it also can increase productivity of scarce resources. And I will give you another example. For instance, dermatology. Um, uh, if you, um, this is, uh, if, you, if you use um, store and forward teleconsultation, uh, you, can, you can increase product, uh, productivity a lot. Uh, in, in, in the recent, uh, in, in the last year, it has become mandatory in Portugal to, um, uh, to refer uh, patients to dermatology um, with uh, a photography of the lesion and with clinical information. And we know that between 20 or 40 uh, to 60% of these cases, uh, can the, the dermatologist can return um, resolutive information to the primary care physician. And the College, the, the college of Dermatology has established that such a, 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 a store and forward consultation is um, uh, needs 10 minutes, whereas a face-to-face -face consultation with a patient needs 20 minutes. So we can, we can address uh, um, the problem of scarce resources also uh, with, uh, with these new forms of delivery of care and technology is uh, a support. Um, well, there are plenty other uh, other um, other uh, other examples where we can uh, 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 also uh, by using artificial intelligence and other advanced analysis techniques 
uh, to automatize processes and to augment uh, and to augment uh, uh, information uh, to to give a good decision support to healthcare professionals. Um, but also as an NHS, as a, as a healthcare system, um, we can redesign our relationship with the citizen and we can try to create uh, a one-to-one -one relationship with the citizen. And therefore, I would like to share with you a small video. If it's possible to share the video now, is that okay? Eu sabia de alguma coisa do Diamantino. Eu costumava vir cá todas as semanas, não o vejo há que tempos. Diamantino. Ele agora está num sítio melhor. O SNS24 tem um sítio novo. Um sítio onde pode fazer uma avaliação online dos seus sintomas. E em caso de necessidade, ser encaminhado para o 808 24 24 24 ou para a unidade de saúde mais adequada. Um sítio onde pode também consultar temas relativos à saúde e alertas clínicos com a máxima credibilidade. Ou aceder ao registro de saúde eletrónico para marcar consulta no médico de família, consultar as suas receitas e boletim de vacinas ou pesquisar prestadores de saúde e respectivos horários de funcionamento. Um sítio mais intuitivo, mais informativo, melhor. SNS24, antes de tudo. Thank you so much for your intervention and for this video that we all, uh, I hope that you like to, to see it, uh, as we do, uh, as we did. Um, just uh, to conclude this first round of interventions, I will pass now the word to Professor Adalberto Campos Fernandes that uh, might uh, would like to comment in this pool of knowledge that we are seeing shared here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, for the kind invitation. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Micaela, and thank you, Lord Marshal Priest. It's, it's really a pleasure to listen to you and to learn with you some thoughts about the importance of national health services all over the world. As you know, last year you celebrated in the UK the 70 years of the NHS, the NHS, and now we are celebrating in Portugal the 40 years of the NHS. We are talking about old and brand new realities because the future is now and you, you pointed out the, the, the main points of the, 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 the issues of sustainability. I should add that um, besides sustainability, one must think a lot about uh, democracy and to guarantee the access to healthcare to all the people and mainly the poor people. And it is the reason why we in the, in the United Nations and the WHO, we are talking about now the universal coverage. The universal coverage is the goal for the millennium. And uh, probably the universal coverage will be linked with your thought and your idea of rethinking the workforce role in the health systems all over the world. And I fully agree with you that the role of nurses is quite uh, undervalued. And we need to talk with all the professions in the health system and we must build some bridges because the secret, I should say, is the cooperation, is the network, is the, the, team, the teamwork and is not to, to, to build walls but to, to, to build some bridges and to have the, capaci the capacity to, to put the doctors and nurses in a permanent dialogue in order to fulfill the main uh, object of, uh, of health systems, that is equity, democracy and uh, universal coverage for every people. So, thank you very much. Your thoughts are really important and you should uh, visit us in, in a, a very, uh, very soon uh, delay because we need to listen to you. Your voice is a very important voice to, to, to Portuguese experts and Portuguese politicians. And the work that we made with you in 2013 and 2014, uh, it, it, it's really a milestone in the process of uh, rethinking and reanalysis of the Portuguese health system. Thank you very much, and I hope we will see you soon, either in Lisbon or in London. And good luck and with, you, with your tasks, political tasks in the Parliament. And I, I really wish you the <laughs> best wishes to, concerning the soft, soft Brexit. Uh, with the, the, the best uh, regards to Britain, to the, the UK and to Europe. Thank you very much.
it's, it's going to be a very interesting uh, opportunity now to show a video that we have prepared for the, if it's possible uh, to show now the video from the nursing. Okay, so now we are going to see the video from uh, the um, initiative that uh, Lord Nigel Crisp shares. It's a, a short video that I would like your attention. Okay, just thanks for sharing this very interesting video, Lord Nigel Crisp. And uh, I don't know if you want to do final remarks. My car and go to Parliament now, so who knows what will happen. Um, but let me also just make the very, you know, reinforce the very good point you made. This is about teamwork. We are in this campaign promoting nursing because I think they're the most underutilized bit of the health system. But it's not a zero sum game. This is teamwork. We know that quality care comes from teamwork. Um, and actually, if you enhance the role of the nurse, you'll enhance the role of the whole team. Uh, and can I also just say, um, to Dr. Michaela, I, I, I greatly enjoyed her the presentation uh, uh, as well. And what I think is particularly good is there are practical examples now appearing all over the world and in Portugal um, and beyond. Um, and really important that we learn from those, capture these learning from those, but also spread them. Um, and that they're not just isolated examples, but that the normal way of accessing healthcare in the first place, unless you have an accident, is in the community and in the home and, and, and so on, and that it is technologically enabled. Technology doesn't do it for you. Technology assists the professional. We still need the professionals, the great professionals we have. And I know in your country, one of the things I learned was the, the quality of education uh, and the quality of the professionals there. So thank you very much. I've really enjoyed joining in this conversation and hearing what colleagues had to say. And I wish you every success with the Hospital of the People project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord Nigel Crisp. It was really a pleasure to have you here. E, bom, vamos uh, terminando esta sessão, já nos estamos a aproximar aqui da nossa hora limite, temos terminado dentro de 10 minutos, porque tenho aqui a promessa de irmos tomar um cafezinho ainda hoje aqui os três. Uh, agradecendo muito a vossa atenção, passamos agora para português e agradecendo aos vários uh, uh, pessoas que nos estão a visualizar neste momento. Terminávamos esta ronda de intervenções com alguns comentários finais. Falámos aqui realmente de que na Lancet há um artigo que critica o Serviço Nacional de Saúde Português, mas é evidente que nós estamos no bom caminho, há uh, evidentes casos de sucesso e, portanto, eu estou convencido que o SNS tem todas as condições para se ingrar. 
realmente esta questão do trabalho em equipa uh, no Serviço Nacional de Saúde, uh, a criar as pontes entre as profissões, os grupos profissionais, e começava talvez aqui pelo professor Adalberto Campos Fernandes, uh, o que é que poderia existir no terreno que facilitasse essa criação de pontes? O que já existe, vamos lá ver, nós não estamos a, a, aqui a discutir, nem a inventar a roda, nem a discutir algo que não exista. Hoje em dia, por todo o país, a realidade, quem conhece o sistema de saúde de concreto, e não apenas de uma abordagem teórica, sabe que ele é feito hoje todos os dias de trabalho de equipa. De equipa entre médicos, entre enfermeiros, interprofissional e interprofissional, e que essa capacidade de, no concreto, junto ao doente, os profissionais se entenderem e se articularem, hoje é uma realidade. É preciso ir um pouco mais longe, mas tem que ser feito, como foi referido pelo Nigel Crisp, tem que ser feito num quadro de discussão aberta, entre todos, para que a qualidade do exercício profissional não se perca, porque muitas vezes o voluntarismo é o pior inimigo do sucesso destas medidas, e portanto ter, perdoem-me a expressão popular, mais olhos que barriga será perigoso, porque este é um processo em que não pode ser posto em causa a qualidade da formação profissional de cada uma das profissões, e o que se tem que fazer ao contrário é melhorar, densificar essa formação, e estabelecer mecanismos onde a cooperação entre as profissões, o trabalho junto do doente e na comunidade e junto às famílias, feito em equipa, acrescenta mais valor do que o trabalho individual. E não apenas do ponto de vista da sustentabilidade, porque podemos melhorar a racionalização dos custos, mas também da satisfação das próprias pessoas, da própria humanização dos cuidados, porque, como nós sabemos, e para concluir, talvez o melhor Uh, ingrediente de uma prestação de cuidados uh, de natureza mais humanizada e mais amiga das pessoas é a proximidade. É a proximidade com as famílias, com os, com, com os cidadãos, num diálogo muito aberto, com mediadores e com mediação. E eu acredito que o sistema de saúde português, tendo as dificuldades que vai tendo muito decorrentes de, de um investimento forte que é necessário fazer, continua a progredir e, e, a, e a fazer um caminho que é um caminho que nos honra a todos nós em termos nacionais e que, que projeta internacionalmente também essa ideia. Sem dúvida. Muito obrigada por essa intervenção. E pegando aqui na palavra para, para uma última observação, a doutora Micaela apresentou-nos aqui realmente aquilo que tem sido um excelente uso de como é que a transformação digital pode ser empregada com inteligência para obter ganhos uh, reais de saúde. Uh, a questão é, havendo uma varinha mágica, qual era o desejo que pediria? Qual era o desejo que eu pediria? Uh, se eu tivesse uma varinha mágica, eu gostava que houvesse um entendimento uh, transversal, quer da parte política, quer, uh, portanto, da parte uh, dos, dos profissionais, quer da parte dos doentes e dos familiares e, no fundo, de, de toda a sociedade, o caminho é um caminho que nós temos que desenhar em conjunto e que as tecnologias de informação, tal como o fizeram em muitos outros setores que foram transformadores, são, são, são transformadores porque alteram, não, não, não são eles que alteram, eles capacitam-nos a alterar a forma como nós nos relacionamos Uh, democratizam muitas vezes essa, 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 essa relação, uh, dão a oportunidade realmente a uma, a, uma, a uma ação muito mais colaborativa, quer em partilha de informação, mas também em complementaridade de, uh, uh, de ações e que, portanto, eu gostava muito que todos tivessem de, estivéssemos de acordo que este é um caminho que nós devemos fazer em conjunto e que é o caminho a seguir e que é através desse que nós vamos encontrar ganhos muito importantes para a sustentabilidade do serviço para não acabarmos todos em, em, em lares, mas conseguirmos viver com autonomia uh, e de forma uh, uh, com capacidade de decisão cada um de nós uh, o, o, nosso, o nosso futuro e as, e, e as nossas vidas não é? e isso é uma, é uma mudança de, de mindset que está a acontecer eu, eu, eu Portanto, sei que está a acontecer, convivo com isso diariamente. Hum, gostava que fosse ainda mais consertado. Vamos fazer, vamos fazer tudo para que este desejo se realize. Uh, eu queria só chamar a atenção que esta conversa é uma conversa que faz o prelúdio para a sessão de abertura, onde vamos recuperar estes vídeos e estas uh, informações para todos os membros do Think Tank O Despertar de um Sonho. 
que faz parte da iniciativa SNS 4 Décadas de Sucesso. Esta iniciativa foi um reto que foi lançado pelo professor Adalberto Campos Fernandes, na altura como Ministro da Saúde, vermos as coisas pela positiva, sem dúvida tem em si mesmo um efeito benéfico para a mudança que todos queremos que aconteça. Neste, neste próximo dia 29 de outubro, na sede da Microsoft em Lisboa, vai ter lugar esta iniciativa que é possível graças a um conjunto de parceiros tecnológicos e à presença e à participação de todos os nossos convidados, que muito nos honram, e esperamos que nesse dia, no final desse dia, possamos ter um conjunto de conclusões e recomendações uh, inovadoras para esta transformação, para que este desejo que foi pedido pela doutora Miquela Monteiro possa acontecer. Agradeço muito a vossa obrigado. presença, muito obrigado, obrigado a todos que nos ouviram com paciência e apesar das desculpas técnicas. Também um grande agradecimento a, 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 aqui aos estúdios da FASA que trabalharam laboriosamente para tentar devolar estas dificuldades e uma vez mais obrigado a todos pela vossa atenção. Bem-ajam!